time to celebrate a first this 4th of July. Episode numero uno of the Unmitigated Gall podcast. But it's hard to truly celebrate freedom this Independence Day. Do you feel free? Maybe you do. Maybe you shouldn't. And maybe Uncle Clarence Thomas should try salt instead of sugar in his grits. We are going to talk about it up next on the Unmitigated Gall podcast. So what's this podcast about? Somebody got to keep it real. Okay. You know, Reclaiming my time by winning. Keep my wife's name. Catch me outside. How about that? You're talking to unabashed hater. My style is impetuous. You come in with some nice waves of the black skin. You're average looking at best. I took offense to that. <laughs> Robert, you ain't got the answer, Sway. I have you beat. You now have the unmitigated gall. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining the unmitigated gall, the podcast for media junkies and in- insiders by media junkies and insiders that's us i am one half of this hosting duo eric and with me independence personified a one woman essence fest <laughs> she comes in the room and us should be like watch this hey she valerie <laughs> the in- the intro is amazing every time i love it thank you so much I, I just, I'm, I feel bad that I don't have one um, as good as you. <laughs> what do you mean every time? This is our to first and only you. podcast. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yes. Yes. So um, no. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. If I can say anything, I would just say that uh, like Drake and Steph Curry, uh, my co-host Eric is proof that Light Skin Brothers are back. <laughs> hey, hey, we ain't never left. Don't let them tell you different. We ain't uh, never here left. we go. Here I'm we go. Here we go. Little known <laughs> fact. Um, yes. Full disclosure. This is a uh, long time coming. We uh, tried a yes. podcast a few years back, but for reasons I won't get into, we had to shut it down. And then life. Yeah. Uh, but we're here now. We're doing it. And I, I, I feel good about it. Now, I will say God is testing a brother. You know, I'm coming down with a little cold. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> fireworks popping off in the background. Uh-oh. I got family over, so they kicking in the hundred percent. Like, Where the food at? You know, so it is a lot going on, but we will not be discouraged. We're free, right? We're here. We made it. Yeah. Well, sure. Okay. Um, I actually did look the other day, and we tried this in 2016. Uh, the wow. end of 2016. So. Definitely a long time coming, um, but everything happens for a reason, and we're doing it now, so that's all that matters. Yeah, wow, five. What was that? Yeah, let me Six just apologize in advance if it sounds like I know, I know, crazy, right? Back when I still had a metabolism, that's crazy. Well, we are here now. We didn't <laughs> do it now. Before we get into these topics, you know, yeah. I just thank you everyone for joining us. Please like and subscribe us on YouTube. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, where you can listen to us on Spotify. So tell a friend, tell your mama, she'll like it too. <laughs> but Valerie, the theme of today's show being that we're recording this on July 4th weekend is freedom, independence. And, you know, normally for the people joining us, we're going to be talking about a lot of pop culture stuff like news talking to, you know, so Will Smith slaps Chris Rock, for instance. But, you know, there's just so much going on right now, so much dealing with our rights that it's just kind of bleeding into everything. So we got to talk about the elephant in the room. My barber was talking about Brittany Griner and the stuff going on with the Supreme Court. So that let me know that this is, you know, our freedom is as big of a talker right now as, as any pop culture thing. Um, why don't we start with Brittany Griner, Chevalier? Hundred percent. As as a black woman, what what are your what's your gut reaction before we lay out the the details of it? Oh, my gut reaction. Um, my gut reaction is I think if this were a famous um, a male athlete or a famous white female athlete, um, there would be a lot more done to try to secure her freedom. Uh, but we're talking about a black 
uh, lesbian uh, female athlete and um, who plays for the WNBA, which already doesn't get a lot of respect. And I think that the efforts to try to get her home shows she's not getting a lot of respect either. Um, I think there would be a lot more media coverage if this were someone else. Um, but it's, but, but it's not, you know, um, who, who, for instance, would be I just home right much... now? Well, Br- you know, I don't Bradley think they Cooper. would necessarily be home. I did a lot of who Bradley Cooper. Who did you say? Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper Bradley would Cooper. be home. <laughs> I just threw out it like a, a white famous man. But that's a, that. Oh, okay. 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 I, I was thinking along the lines of, but I, I guess I'm sort of torn because I do believe, um, and I listened to a bunch of interviews, you know, her wife has recently started doing a bunch of interviews. And I do believe that if this were, and a lot of people are using, you know, LeBron James and Steph Curry as examples, I think knowing what we know now about Putin and what he's capable of doing, I think, I don't think that even they would be home to be honest with you, but I do think there would be, more media coverage of it would be talking about it more for sure. Um, but I think he would use the status and the celebrity of someone as big as a LeBron, as big as a Steph Curry. If you want to even go into a, a different sports, as big as a Tom Brady, he would use that to his advantage. I don't think that those individuals would still be home, but I have to fight to get that story. You know, we have to fight to get that story on. And so um, for me, that's what I think about when I think about Brittany Griner is that because she's a black woman, um, it's just not getting as much coverage um, as it should be. Contrast that with, let's just say it was like a Lindsey Vaughn. I think we would, however many, we're 100 and probably 30 plus, 140 days later, we'd still be in breaking news if this were her. But it's a black lesbian WNBA player and everyone just just sort of like, Mm. you know, we'll see so your position see is not that she would be home, but the coverage and the, the focus on it would be different if it, if it were not a, a black woman who, who was a lesbian. Now, let me, let Absolutely. me pose this to you. Um, now, first of all, you said Tom Brady, if Tom Brady was in Russia, we would be in nuclear warfare exactly. right now. It would be exactly. bombs outside. It would not be fireworks. We'd be, there would be Russian, uh, missiles. But let me let me pose this to you because all right, let's just the facts as they are. Brittany Griner, she's arrested. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, her next she's in detention at least until December. Um Russia has like a ninety nine percent conviction rate. And even if she does um, yep. you know, even if she is found not guilty, they could just choose to overturn that. So basically she's gonna be in jail. So right. it comes down to deal making. And I think President Biden, he's in a lose-lose, wouldn't you say? Because Russia has said uh, through state media news outlets that they want this arms dealer, what do they call him, the merchant of death. This guy um, was convicted of conspiring to kill U.S. citizens, a terrorist. He inspired Nicolas Cage's character in Lord of War. So this is a a man with some bodies on him. Now, and and Russia wants a straight trade for Britney, like one-to-one. Now, they're saying that to make it more palatable to the U.S. government, they want to get the other, um, I think it's another Marine or somebody over there. So two for one. It is. Um, But I feel like it's just a lose-lose for Biden because if he gives up Griner in the straight swap, he's going to get banged by the GOP in the elections, right? And then if he doesn't Mm -hmm. give up Griner, he's going to lose people like voters like you, black female women who helped get him elected. Right were crucial to getting Biden elected. So, I mean, what's a, what's a, bro- a brother like Biden to do? Um, what everyone should do. Listen to black women. <laughs> okay. Period. So does do black women who, want who a cares straight what, swap? Who cares if the GOP is going to... But who cares if the GOP... They're going to slam you regardless. So just... Wh- which one is more important to you? Which one has the bigger impact... In the next election for you, the fact that the GOP is going to slam you because you gave up the so-called merchant of death or black women putting their support behind somebody else. Yeah, you got to go with who brought you to the dance. I mean, I mean, 
Exactly. You definitely don't want to upset uh, black female voters at this point. And, you know, even if Brittany is locked up on a petty crime that they're, they're trying to say she's like a drug dealer. But let regardless of why she's there, the fact yeah, is that's she's the part a that's, well-known that's... person. So it's, it's a straight swap for two well-known people. The crimes are not comparable at all. But right. um, you got to I mean, basically, at this point, you just got to get her home for optics. Yeah. And I don't want to make it seem as though, because I did a little, I knew a little bit of, I mean, I know Brittany Griner. I've been watching her since she played at Baylor. Um, but I did a little bit of research and she, she literally is the LeBron James of the WNBA. She was McDonald's All-American, the AP Player of the Year. And these are just a couple of the stats. Um, the NCAA champion for Baylor in 2012, the number one pick in the 2013 draft, an eight-time NBA, a WNBA All-Star um, a WNBA champion in 2014, two-time scoring champion, eight-time blocks uh, leader, two-time defensive player of the year. And then you you have to also mention all of the things that she did. This is the craziest part to me about this story, is that she is in uh, being detained in a country that she played for. That that that's the part that that just doesn't make sense to me. So in addition to everything that she accomplished, and that was just some, you know, sort of the big ones, you know, that we sort of, you know, look at in terms of stats. She was also a Russia Cup winner, a three-time Russia National League champion, and a a four-time Euro League champion. So, you know, this isn't just, you know, some WNBA player. This is literally the LeBron James of the WNBA. Um, Why are you wincing? I mean, when you say the, you know, I I get what you're saying. She's... Huge I mean, she's game. up. She's, I, I, I mean, feel like of, it's of calling her the of LeBron the WNBA James players, of the WNBA. she's up there of the WNBA players. Like maybe uh, Diana Taurasi or Sue Bird would be the LeBron James. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, it's been some time since she won a WNBA championship, but I mean, her her stats speak for themselves. So, so you're saying by any means bring necessary, bring your girl home. <laughs> All right, you heard of Biden. This is yeah, this is I mean, your but voter right it. here, Chevalry, <laughs> and she wants Brittany Griner home. Get it done, regardless of the drug lords you have to bring back. Yeah, I just I don't. From all the articles that I've read, um, interviews that I've seen, it just doesn't seem like the U.S. is going to do that. They're not going to give up this guy or anyone else um, in order to bring her home. So. Well, and it's sad some... because she's looking for the little bit of, of cannabis oil or hash or whatever it is you call it in these cartridges. She's mm-hmm. looking at uh, 10 years, up to 10 years in prison. And, you know, Brittany Griner is only two years older than my oldest son. So I, I, I just can't imagine what her parents, you know, what her wife, um, you know, what they're going through. This is to me, this is a this is a young person being detained in a country, you know, again, a country that she played for. <laughs> that that That's the part that, that is um, really upsetting for me, is that she's being detained in a country that she actually, you know, you know, played for and they paid her. Let's also not forget, and this brings up another point, Brittany Griner wouldn't even have been over in Russia if the WNBA played their pay- players what they were supposed to be paid. Oh, uh, what is, no, I disagree with that. Thing. Thing. No, no. This whole supposed to I'm play, not saying that the WNBA market, no, 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 no. I'm not saying WA, I'm not saying WNBA players should be making the same amount as NBA players. I get it. I get that they don't have the same um um fan base. Right. Um that they don't make uh the same amount of revenue, the same amount of money coming in. Correct. But it's the fact that so many of them have to go overseas in order to make, you know, somewhat of a decent living. That's that's the only reason why she was over there. Nobody goes overseas to play because because they want to. It's because they, they have to, because they're not making enough money in this country. And okay. that's sad. Russia aside, but the fact of like going overseas in general mm-hmm. to have to like make a living, no tears for you on that. I mean, the, like like I said, the market dictates, <laughs> you know, who gets paid. <laughs> Serena and uh, plenty right. of female tennis stars are getting paid handsomely in the U.S. because people want to pay to see that. So... You know, do are they great they're players? The, they're the unicorns, yes. though. Most most female. We're just now talking about the U.S. women's soccer team finally making 
what they should be making. And this is after constantly winning championships. So you say. And they were still paid less than the men. What do you mean, so I say? That, that's, not, okay. that's not disputed. The, the no, women no. always win the World Cup. The U.S. women's soccer team. The, and they they're... made less money than the men's soccer team. Who, who hasn't won? Correct. That's not but... disputed. When you compare the box office draws of men's soccer to women's soccer, women's soccer is dwarfed. Mm -hmm. Now, you you have an argument as far as the national teams, comparing the national teams. But if you're talking about viewers and revenue generated and how that revenue translate into paychecks, then I I don't want to hear this should be paid. Like, you're paid what you're paid. Like, you know. You, you can fight for more, you can negotiate for more, and if you have leverage, you will get paid you'll get paid more. Sometimes you'll get paid too much, like many of these NBA players, but they have leverage because, you know exactly. this is an in demand product. So I, I don't you know, I, I do yes, bring Brittany home, but you know I think, you know, I don't want to conflate some of these issues, you know, like which these Athletes should be getting paid and whatever, and she shouldn't even be over there because she, well, well, she was over there. And, you know, women have been going overseas that, for that's many true. times. That's true. However, I will say, I don't know how, right. I don't know how often you watch WNBA games, but people who do watch those games, I took my son to those games, uh, sons to those games. Um, it's a, it's a fun game. It's, you know, so I, I, I disagree that they shouldn't be paid more money. I think if as much focus or as some focus, not even as much, just some focus is put on the WNBA and their players, they, they will be able to, to, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Shoot. They, they Stay deserve home, that money. Basically. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. Well, let's just leave it there. I don't know that we're going to agree on that part in particular, but I do think she was not on that de- part, but I think we both agree that Brittany should come home. Yeah. She's the victim of a tough situation because Russia has long paid female athletes a lot more than they get paid in the U S and she became victim right. of political <laughs> collateral damage. So she was just caught up in the middle and more than likely she's going to have to do some years uh, unless Joe Biden, you know, bows to the pressure of the American public. And brings her home and do it because Russia wants to do a one of one trade. They don't want to do this two for one stuff, which is what the U.S. wants. So, yeah, I, mean, I will gladly swap Clarence Thomas for Brittany Griner. How about that? Let's do it. I mean, <laughs> so of we course, give you a Supreme Court justice. You give us back our WNBA player. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Yes, because he's not on any Mount Rushmore of anything. Uh, but of course, he's been in the news. No. Not, of course, for Roe versus Wade, him and playing a, a big role in that. But he also, after, in his opinion, was saying that you know he he wants to take down um, contraceptive rights, um, uh, the, the law that made gay sex legal. He he says you know that's that's up for reconsidering um, gay marriage. So I mean, he's just and then I think a couple of days ago uh, he was quoted as saying that. COVID vaccines contain the cells of aborted fetuses. Like this guy is wild. Yeah. yeah. When you sent me that, I thought, okay, uh, Clarence, <laughs> now we've gone a little too far. <laughs> what I think is so interesting about this entire thing. Um, again, doing a lot of research, this will let you know how old I am. So Roe v. Wade was passed nine months before I was born. So January 22nd, 1973, um, and then overturned just last month. But what's interesting about it is that um, it's it's in regards to the 14th Amendment and the due process clause, um, basically providing women with the, a right to privacy. And what why that's so interesting is because of all the things that Clarence Thomas wants to overturn, Roe v. Wade, um, birth control, gay marriage, he conveniently left off um, Virginia v. Loving, yes. which was the 1967 Supreme Court decision, which banned or laws uh, uh, against laws banning interracial marriage. And what's so interesting about that is that it is the same due process clause of the 14th Amendment. So it so it's fine for that part of the clause to apply to 
his interracial marriage, but not for women to have the right to decide what they want to do with their bodies. And I, I just, when I was doing that research, I thought, wow, what are, what are the odds that it would be the exact same amendment, the exact same clause, but he somehow conveniently has left off of his, of his list of, 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 of um, things to overturn. He left off interracial marriage because he's in one. Oh, we humans, we are selfish creatures. That way he's like, you will not take my <laughs> my flower, my piece of American pie. You will not deprive me of that. But the rest of you can kick rocks. What, were, what did you think what when, when that was, when it was overturned? When Roe v. Wade was overturned? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, you're trying to get me in trouble. Okay, here is what I honestly <laughs> thought. So, because okay. we kind of, you know, we had a little chat about it. And I was, you know, at first I was just thinking of like the letter of the law, like is abortion mm -hmm. a assured by the United States Constitution? So at first I was like, well, I mean, no, it's not. And there was other constitutional experts that kind of backed that up, and which is, you know, why um, the Supreme Court uh, went after the, the gun rights laws in New York, because gun rights are actually in the constitution. So, but then I started thinking, mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on. Let's just back up. Why are we so stuck to this archaic document written by slave owners? Like, why can't we just use that as a building block? Why Facts. can't we get to where we should be? So at first I was just like, well, technically, but you know, we're talking about people and people's lives and we're talking about, and we always talk about building a more perfect union. And so we're, if we are trying to build a more perfect union than common sense and, uh, you know, caring for our neighbor and like building towards the future and evolving evolution, like we should be evolving. So, you know, it's once I, I got out of like the left side of my brain and just started thinking like a human being, it's like you, you got to protect people and you have to care about, you know, you just love that neighbor. I mean, I, I hate to to say it like that, but you know, you just have to, and, and you can't have people thinking that they're less of a citizen than the person next to them. And that's what's happening because, you know, it's like as men, we're not really losing any rights as it pertains to our bodies. So which, but if contraceptive rights are taken away, then maybe that does happen. I don't know. I think what's interesting about that ruling is that it says in, in overturning it, that abortion is not rooted in this nation's history or tradition, not considered a right when due process was ratified in 1868. Like abortion yeah. wasn't around then. So, of course, it's not in our Constitution. And you start throwing around our nation's traditions and history. Oh, it gets real messy. Exactly. When you start using that phrase. We got a lot of traditions and histories that you don't want to bring back. So, I mean, if if that's what we're using as justification that's just not going to cut it. Now, mm -hmm. let me ask you this, Chevalry. Um, should Biden be pushing to increase the number of justices on the Supreme Court? Why not? By any means necessary, huh? <laughs> I mean, Trump, uh -oh. Trump, I can't uh -oh. exactly remember. Oh, Lord. You're going to maybe put on the brother Malcolm glasses. By oh, any Lord. means necessary, <laughs> we are going to... No, I'm sorry. Um... I think at this point, um, you know, I love Michelle Obama. Like, I love Michelle Obama. I really, really do. But, but? I think is that there a but? There is a but. But um, that when when they go low, we go high. It, it, we got to stop that. Like, it's time it's time to get in the mud and get dirty with them as well. They They would have no problem if this were reversed and it was a six, three majority, um, for, for the liberals or, or for the, for Democrats with a Republican president in office, adding more justices to the court. Remember so, when Mitch uh, McConnell blocked Obama's last appointment on his way out? I was like, Oh, Merrick he Garland. could do that. I was like, Oh, he yep. could just like decide not to do that. I'm like, that's way too much power for one person. But it, it and here's the thing: so. you can you can blame you know you can blame you know the Republicans. I've seen a lot of backlash, um, you know, when the Obamas put out statements when Roe v. Wade was overturned. I saw a lot of backlash, you know, towards them because, 
you know, um, Obama didn't uh, codify Roe v. Wade. He didn't um, sort of put some pressure maybe on Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, love um, RBG. But girl, you should have stepped down way before um, Trump got in office and then you end up passing away on the court and that left him another person. So we had Obama's, um, the, um, uh, the seat that Obama needed to fill. He filled that one with, I think, um, Gorsuch and then he mm-hmm. filled Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And then how's he end up getting a- Amy Coney Barrett? I don't remember. Um, yeah, don't hold me to that. Court? I, I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're not big uh, Supreme Court. Uh, was it Scalia here, or but, I don't? I don't you know, know the fact that he. No, Scalia was before um, RBG, but um, it doesn't matter. The man got to fill three seats on the court, and I mean, drastically swinging, um, um, you know, the court to the right. And so, as much as I love the fact that we have our very first Black female justice on the court with uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, I feel like you know. She's just doing all the things and, and, and it doesn't, it, it does, but it doesn't. It's like, she's going to be making decisions and ruling on things and nothing going her way. It's like turning in assignments and, 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 and always getting an F. I know <laughs> her and Sonia Sotomayor just given these great opinions uh, about, you know, why they didn't agree. But as far as the actual laws, it will mean nothing. It'll be symbolic. And unfortunately, that's, you know, what a lot of Biden's appoint, appointees, particularly like black women uh, t- to high places, they're symbolic at this point. Um, so, yeah, if he really wants to get his hands dirty, he could expand that court. But uh, that's going to take some real balls. Yo, boy. Yeah, it's going to take some balls that I don't I don't think our president has right now. So. Ooh. Valerie, the unmitigated goal. I'm just saying, Call, calling out Joe I'm just Biden saying, it like just, that. At, at this point, like <laughs> Roe v. Wade overturned. You know, if if they overturn gay marriage, birth control, I just think it's it's just going to be a a free for all. I heard them say the other night on the on the evening news, affirmative action is is one of the things that um katanji brown jackson will you know will be working on the next time uh the supreme court is in session and it's just like they're they're gonna overturn everything everything that we've accomplished um in the last 50 plus years was for nothing basically we we literally the day that roe v wade was overturned we stepped back to january 21st 1973 which was the day before roe v wade became legal precedent yeah We're, well we stepped back 50 years in history you know at first when roe v wade was overturned i started seeing all these memes of like handmaid's tale handmaid's tale but i was like oh you're overreacting but when you when you look at like the bigger picture like going after gay rights and contraceptive rights i mean like what no contraceptive i mean no contraception? Like, what What are we talking about here? Uh, so it, right. it's definitely Handmaid's Tale-ish. Um, we could be seeing a lot of that. <laughs> so, ask. <laughs> Handmaid's Tale lights. <laughs> so listen. We, we, we laugh, listen, but it's not funny. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's terrible. But since you are laughing a little bit, it's now a perfect time to... Lighten up the mood a little bit. You know, I had a great interview with a former colleague of mine. Yes. Melissa Knowles. Uh, She's a a great anchor, a great entertainment reporter. I enjoyed it immensely. And uh, I would uh, like for you all to enjoy it, too. Here it is. All right, everyone. Stop your swiping. Pause that TikTok. It's time to focus for the unmitigated gall audacious interview. One on one with someone in the media who is making it happen. With me today, the pod's first interview, a woman who is the caffeine in your morning show coffee. She could sell water to a whale and a black story to a red state. A wife, a mother, a proud Houstonian who swears she's not related to Beyonce. My friend and colleague, Melissa Knowles. Melissa, thank you for being with me. 
gosh, that was like the most beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. And yes, I am a proud Houstonian. And I don't think I'm related to Beyonce. Yes, because we're both from Houston. And of course, we are melanated. People make that assumption. Oh, and my last name being Knowles. There's that part. So. Right. Well, I mean, you're a star in your own right. So I'm oh, happy thanks. that you're here. Like I said, the first guest. I couldn't ask anybody else first. So I'm just happy to be with you. And you know, I just, we worked together for a few yeah. years and it was really one of the best times of my career as far as fun, engagement. I, you know, I really, I think about those times fondly. So whenever I look at your segments, I'm like, oh, I could have just, oh. You got to tweak me a little bit, a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, those were some of the best years for my career as well. Not just because you're a fantastic producer, you were and are, um, just so keenly aware of the culture and the moment. And I mean, we've only known each other for what, like four or five years, but I promise it's like you live in here because you you would write in my voice. So I would read the script and be like, that's exactly what I would say. Like, and we hadn't even discussed it, but you always knew exactly the way to put a story out there where it made sense, but it was also, I mean, I guess the morning caffeine that you needed without having a cup of coffee. Exactly. <laughs> and we're going to get to the culture and, and that later. So put a pin in that, but okay. I, you know, you're a, a anchor and correspondent for HLN. So I want to talk about that first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you came to HLN in 2015 when there was a, a rebranding, a whole shift you were part of the the daily share yeah. and um you know you you lasted and you know you've seen you've seen those changes so what um what were where was your mind then mm -hmm. in 2015 and what do you think about that time now i will say as my father has always told me that the only constant is change as cliche as that sounds and at that time in my life in 2014, 2015, I was going through a major transition in my personal life as well as my professional life. Uh, full disclosure, and you know, I keep it so real, I keep it raw. I was in the middle of a divorce at that point. And I was honestly just happy to have a job when CNN and HLM were like, ah, that's our girl. I was like, I'll sign the contract right now because I needed the money, I needed steady work, and I needed something to focus on that wasn't my personal life. Coming in for the daily share, I was excited to be a part of that team and to work with those individuals because it was something new. HLN was in the process of rebranding and it always feels good and fresh and new to be a part of something like that. Uh, the Daily Share did not last, but your girl did. And now I'm on Morning Express with Robin Mead. I feel like the reason that I was able to sustain and maintain is because, and I'm not trying to rhyme on purpose, um, although I do spit hot fire. Not really. Um, I <laughs> dial on, dial on, dial on. I, but, 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 I, I just really, I try to adapt whenever I saw a time to pivot and that it would be necessary to do so. And I think that what translated from the Daily Share to Morning Express was just me being myself, my personality coming through each one of those scripts, not just reading the words in print and or saying the words that were in front of me on the teleprompter, but really being conversational as I am with you right now, being the same person off camera as I am on camera. I was doing this um, segment and it was called, oh my goodness, see, and I'm now, I'm drawing a blank. It was a segment where we talked about what was trending like that hour and they would come to me at the top of I every remember. hour. Do you remember that? And it was this graph and it was in real time and nothing was written. So I would just have to say, okay, um, coming in at number five and obviously we would do the backward, the, the countdown, right? Coming at number five, it is Zendaya. Oh y'all. So she is trending on Instagram and well, TikTok wasn't a thing back then. She's trending on Instagram and Twitter right now because everybody said, what's up with Zendaya? You know, something like that. And then I would go to I would count down for each topic. And I, I feel that the bosses were like, oh, she's just like ad living and but saying all the facts and making it fun and relatable. And that was something that they were looking for. So and I didn't know that at the time. I, again, just being myself. So that that time in my life was so like transitional for me. But again, I was trying to make sure that I was focused on pivoting and adapting in both my personal and professional life. 
Now, I remember that, and I, I feel like that was one of the more innovative parts of the show, which could have worked and stayed because, like you said, you had the graphic, the, this big yeah. monitor that shows kind of the spikes in the trending. Um, do you think it was the execution of the Daily Share as a whole, or do you think that we just kind of weren't ready, or was it right place and time? I think it was a combination of all of the above. I do believe that there is still a place for, how can I not remember what it was called, that there is still a place for that segment in any daily news show. Because while people will say, oh, I don't really care what's trending, I'm not really talking about that. Yes, you are, because that's why it's trending. Yes, you are, because this is the water cooler conversation of the moment. And now as we're getting out of the pandemic and you are having face-to-face -face encounters with people again, or even if you're just having those conversations on social media, you want to know what's going on. And I'm knows it all, so I get to know it so I could tell all of y'all, you know? I absolutely believe right. that if it were to come back now, that there would still, the social index, boom, it came to your girl. Because I'm sitting here like, what was the comment? So, the social index. <laughs> That's what there, it was. Yeah, there is, a, there is a space and a place for the social index to continue to exist. And I would certainly be the person to, to bring that to you because, I mean, I, I think I'm addicted to social news. I, I, I can't turn it off. Even when I'm on vacation, as I was, I don't know if you see my stomach color. Um, I was in Jamaica a couple of weeks ago having a good time. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I, even on, on the beach, on the beach, I'm sitting there looking at my phone like, oh, really? Because also, I like to be in the loop. I, like, I wasn't checking my work emails. Mm -hmm. Turn those notifications off. Unsubscribe. I was looking at like just the topics of conversation because I wanted to know what was happening so that when I got back from vacation, I would be prepared to speak on it. And really, that's what people are going to be talking about. You know, I used to sometimes get frustrated if we had to, like, trim down a segment of yours mm. because I feel like those water cooler topics, that's, that's what people talk about. Like, mm -hmm. you can only talk about shootings and, oh, you know, these, these wars for so yeah. long. So I always appreciated that. But I wanted to get back to, like, you and you first coming because – the word on you, I wasn't working with you at that oh, point. Lord. And so, you know, newsrooms talk. And, they, and the okay. word on you was so different from my actual experience with you. They what was like, the word? I want to hear what was the word. The, the word I got was that, you know, she she's a little difficult. She, you know, she'll shade you if you don't produce it right. But my experience <laughs> with you is you'll read the script that you're given, even if it's a bad one, you'll deliver it to the best of your ability. And if it is good, you will take it to that next level. Like, for instance, I had no idea you didn't like those kind of those segments where you sell stuff. I thought you loved doing it because they were so great. But I mean, so my my point of view is I was given I was given a bad, bad uh, info on you. So, yes, and I'm glad were. it turned out to be wrong. Yeah, set the record straight, brother, because yes, you're, I'm not difficult to work with. And can I just say, that is a reputation that, one, does not pertain to me, um, but two, that I believe a number of Black women can be labeled as difficult for one time saying anything that someone else perceives as uh, not going along with the get along. I have a voice and I'm going to use it. I have more than a decade, almost two, of experience in this business. So I'm not brand new. I mean, I know your girl looks young. Thank you, DNA. <laughs> I'm just saying that there have been many times where I have felt that I have had to prove myself on a daily basis as, as someone worthy of, of having a seat at the table. And now I don't feel the need to prove myself because I show up and I do the work every single day. But I do appreciate you at least getting to know me and seeing that I was not difficult to work with. I'm going to tell you if I don't like something, I'm going to tell you when I do. Is that difficult? No, and I think, you know, every time, you know, this is not me kissing your butt. This is straight up. Um you know, when there are times where I needed to add something or change something or maybe went, went a little too hard, you told me. Um, and, you know, I feel like that dialogue should happen. And maybe if the producer isn't comfortable having that dialogue, maybe that's what happens. But, mm -hmm. you know, countless correspondents, anchors, reporters have said, you know, you have to look out for your own career. So 
I can't really get mad at that. And then if a producer is not doing their job, you're kind of sowing seeds of doubt into that, into your talent for the future. So again, that that was was not the case. But can you think of a story or example? I mean, like I said, you've you've worked as a sports reporter. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, you have a long career before you came to HLN. Can you think of a time where you had to set the record straight, mm -hmm. either with the producer or um, or other talent in order to get Melissa Knowles conveyed properly on camera? I, b before I tell you that part, I do want to say that a lot of times people who have never worked in television before and who see TV and see news anchors or anyone who's presenting something in front of the camera, but particularly with the news, they forget that there is, especially at a national level, that there is an entire team working on each one of these scripts. There's producer, there's writers, there's, I mean, there, there's a whole team, but when you are the face putting that information out there, people will take it from you and say, oh, well, Melissa said that. So if I make a mistake or if I flub something on the air, they're not saying, oh, I wonder uh, who on her team messed that up. It's like, well, Melissa messed that up. So yeah, it is you putting your face and your name out there associated with, with whichever story you're telling that day. And I think that that is, I know that is why for me, I get, I get to a place where I'm trying to or I, I'm at a place where I'm always trying to do my my very best and to tell the stories factually and, and with a little bit of pizzazz because it's coming from me, yes, but there's a team who I'm representing. As far as the time where I have had to like set somebody straight, I won't use a very specific example that happened. Well, I will use a specific example that happened recently. I, I won't name names. Don't name them. So, I'm not name them. <laughs> but there was, as, I mean, pertaining to the first point I was just making, someone had written something in a script that was um, grammatically incorrect. Now, do I speak in, you know, a certain way? I wouldn't call it code switching. I know who I am, right? And I know how to speak on camera. Do I add, uh, what do they, what do the kids call it? I, I forget. Did what they put called. hot sauce in without your permission? Is that what you're saying? Basically, basically. And I was like, and I remember asking, I'm like, wait, uh, the way this is written, that that's grammatically incorrect. Is that a typo? And they're like, oh no, I just thought that's how you would say it. I said, como? No, 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 no. You must have me confused because I'm not fine for the okie doke. One, my mother would be livid with me. And yes, my mother lives in my head and my mother is, she's an attorney now, but she growing up, she, she had a, she has a master's in English. This is a woman who had me going to the library as a kid and writing book reports that were due for her and then using her red pen to correct them in front of me. I'm talking about from like second grade and up and it was a stickler for how I spoke and how I wrote. And I know that I don't just represent myself. I represent my family, the whole Knowles clan, <laughs> my whole family. Um, when I'm out there in front of the camera and I had to let that producer know, like, well, I know you, for some odd reason, think that that is how I would speak on camera because you've seen me give my pizzazz, I'm going to leave it at that, to a script, Right. you uh, you are misinformed if you believe that I'm going to go out there and make myself look like a fool, an uneducated fool, by saying something in, in a way that, that I never would. So I, I set that straight, and I, and I just use a certain tone. I'm not a screamer. I don't yell. I don't get in people's faces. I'm not disrespectful. I'm never going to do that. But I will let you know when, um, when, when you've uh, crossed a boundary. And I imagine you find that there, you have this kind of pressure to balance being authentic mm -hmm. and still be a professional that part and maybe everybody doesn't get it so no they don't and sometimes i think that when you see what the, the kinds of stories that i tell on television versus like if you check out my social media by the way bienvenidos you're on the gram now i see you i, saw you I had to get back on the gram I got a podcast to promote. I mean, uh, but like just that, like me saying, I mean, like that's me, right? But I believe that some people take what they see of me on social media and think that I'm going to be exactly that way on camera. And there's a fine line. You sometimes have to tiptoe through the tulips when you're on camera in a professional setting, I don't believe that Instagram or TikTok or any of those kinds of social media platforms, which are meant for fun and being social 
are the same thing as being a, an entertainment news anchor. So I just have to kind of tiptoe a little bit sometimes. Well, and speaking of that, you know, a lot of people don't know, speaking about balance, how much you're juggling. So to those out here watching, Melissa does, I don't know if you still, but you do your own makeup, you work out every day. Talk about, and I will say that for a lot of the um, (laughs) successful uh, anchors and correspondents, I know, I think the one thing that a lot of y'all have in common is the ability to be disciplined and motivated and ambitious. Sure. Sure. Because ta- talent is not enough. So talk about your grind and your mindset to Ugh. continue that grind. Because for yeah. me, I, I don't, I'm not quite there. I don't believe in that phrase. As I keep seeing it pop up, I thought we had lost that with like 2021. No days off. You have to take days off. You have to like have recess with your mind. My grind starts every morning, Monday through Friday at 2.55 a.m. That is when my alarm goes off. Why 2.55? I know that sounds like such a crazy odd time. One, I love odd numbers. Just always have. I love the number five. Just always have. And I need that time to kind of get my mind right. The And I work out every morning before I go to work. So I have to be camera ready every morning at 6 a.m. I think that's that's which the most people are like, oh gosh, that's early. It's early, it's early as hell. So that's the job. That's the job though. That's the job I signed up for. That's the job I've maintained for darn near eight years, right? And I worked so hard to get here. So I'm going to do what it takes to stay here. I get up to, or I wake up. I don't get out of bed yet. Wake up at 2.55 and I give myself time to indulge a little bit. It might be cruising on social media, seeing what stories came out overnight that I that I hadn't seen, just kind of getting myself caught up and ready for the day. And then I'm in my me time zone. You and I had a conversation recently where you were like, so what motivates you? Do you need like something's coming up, an event that's coming up? And I'm like, the event is every day. The event is me, right? I mean, and <laughs> being completely honest, I'm vain and I just turned 40. I'm not afraid to put that number out there. I was before. I've been talking to my therapist about that. Um, I'm not anymore though. <laughs> and I, I'm vain when it comes to the way I look in front of the camera, when you have to be in front of the camera every single day. And most of the time people are only hearing a few words and then moving on to the next thing. I know that people's attention spans are short. And so I want to make sure that when they're looking at me, they're not distracted by Oh, well, I don't know what, what was she doing with her hair that day or what is she, you know, all of that. So I, but I also devote that time, not just because I want, you know, my arms to look ripped, but because that's the only time during the day that I'm really going to be able to get that the house is completely quiet. I have a son. He's almost four. I have a dog. I don't know how old my dog is. He's a rescue. My husband, you know, and we occasionally have guests here. My stepmom is visiting now and we, but that's the time that I dedicate to myself where I meditate, where I get on my Peloton, you know, all about the spin classes or I'm doing yoga, something every morning that's just for me. Three times a week, I do um, arms and light weights for 10 minutes guided. I do hit classes and it just helps me like get my mind right for the day, prepare for the day mentally so that I can show up as my best every day. And I don't always, but I, I really do try and I'm really streaky. I don't know how that's coming across saying I'm streaky. When I'm, what I mean by that is that I kind of am obsessed with streaks. So I have not missed a day in 2022. I have done something ah, every day, whether that's okay. meditating, like on my off days. So usually Sundays are a day where I don't do anything physical because um, I'm going to soccer practice. I'm making sure I did all the laundry because I'm a Southerner. I'm a I'm old school. And I I don't know if you saw my... Oh, actually, I know you did because you liked it. I was at the wash interior because that's what we called it <laughs> growing up. I was at the wash interior because our... our our washer was on the fritz and we had just piles of laundry because we'd gone out of town. You know, kids run through clothes, three, four outfits a day. And I say four, not four. And so I had all this mm-hmm. laundry piled up and it just needed to get done. So I went to the washer tier to get all that done. That was like half my day on Sunday after soccer practice. And I made dinner. And I mean, it's just, it's a constant juggling act. I wouldn't even call it a balancing act because I never feel as if I'm completely balanced. Um, it, there's always something that's gonna fall, right? Like I'm always just juggling all these balls where it's work, um, my home life or whatever, I'm grocery shopping, I'm doing all the things, but I really am living the life that I want, the life that I always dreamt that I that I would be living at Fowdy. 
have thought. You know, I appreciate you for being so authentic. And I appreciate you saying that you're not going to have a Pam, Pam Oliver hair moment. But oh! no, no more, no shade to her. No shade. Oh! Well, that, yeah, a shade to her. But Melissa Knowles will not be doing that. But one of the things I really love about you is uh, finding out that you cook. We did a segment and you oh cooked. And I was like, wow, she's actually moving around this kitchen like she does it a few times a week so i, I love that about you my mom always cooked for me growing up so i love that you're still <laughs> despite the fact that you're waking up at 255 you're still getting it done mm -hmm. um but you you talked about your home life your kids your husband you mentioned it um you know tell me a little bit about that and do yeah. you uh, expect to grow your family anymore. Oh, I'm going to tell you what I tell everybody else. Y'all better stay out of my uterus. Okay. Uh, what's happening over here is I am, I am, um, savoring the moment. Okay. I am enjoying where I am right now. As I said, my child is almost four. And, um, if we decide to, we will, if we don't, we won't. That's, that's just where we are at, at this current moment. So I'm married to, oh, I should mention, oh, y'all probably see me. Look at that. There he is. There's my husband making an appearance right here because I'm in I'm in what was supposed to be my home office, but turned into his because of the pandemic. Um, it, my husband, Scott, and I have been married for five years. And in the way, is it five? One, two, three, I'll try to do the bathroom. That's horrible. That's horrible. Yeah, I got married in 2015. 20, 2017. 2017. No. 2017. Sorry, 2017. Because we okay. got married here. We had a surprise wedding in our house, which was, it was supposed to be what well, everybody thought that it was a housewarming slash um engagement party but an hour into it we both we sneaked upstairs i changed it to my wedding dress and he changed it to his tux and we got married and literally it was beautiful it was amazing it's awesome 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 but um scott and uh scott is always working he has two full-time jobs running one company and then also doing commercial real estate and then you know what what i do so we we really work opposite schedules and i think that finding someone who is a real partner who know like you have your thing you're good at. I have my things that I'm good at. Like Scott doesn't cook. I mean, he can make like one or two things really, really well. Omelets. Like eggs or something. Your... Yeah, omelets. See there, see there. Omelet, always see eggs. There. He's real. I can't make an omelet to save my life. I cannot. It always turns into a scramble. I can't get the flip right. I, I, it, ain't, it ain't for me. Um, but then I look at me speaking eight. Um, anyway, um, but I, I do the cooking most of the time or we order out and Scott, this is horrible. Scott does all the bill paying. So, uh, <laughs> cause your girl likes to shop. Uh, but I salute then... you, Scott. <laughs> I salute you. He's a good man. And he is just the most incredibly supportive, thoughtful, kind partner, even when no one, else, no one is looking when nobody is around, when, you know, it's just the two of us and we work at that. I think that, uh, and being parents, man, you did not warn me. I mean, maybe a little bit you warned me. Being a parent is the hardest job I have ever had. As hard as I thought it was going to be. I wish it were that easy. Because it just isn't. Yeah. It's, it's just a kind. Con... What did you say it was recently? Because I started using that. Oh, it's like being hazed. Every being day. hazed. 24 <laughs> seven. I'm like, at some point, this is going to stop, right? No, nope. it ain't stopping. Nope. I can see why them jab turkeys from the 70s was just like, I'm going to get a pack of cigarettes. Not jab turkeys. But, uh, <laughs> cigarettes had jab a quality. Had you a know. quality. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we're, we're sticking it out in 2022 and being better parents. So yeah, salute to you for doing that. Before we get to the fun, because I can't have you on here and not have fun. Uh -oh. you, you talked about young people mm. and and again, folks, she's getting a lot done. What I noticed is that you would always have like someone from college come into your office. You're mentoring. Oh, I, You're, I mean, people are reaching out to you on their own. Yeah. She's not going through like the company channels. It's just when the opportunity presents itself, mm -hmm. you're mentoring it. And I got to say, I got to get better at that. You know, mm -hmm. I get in my zone and I don't want to be bothered. But I mean, why is that so important to you? And why should I be mentoring more? Because I give a damn. That's the bottom line. If you give a damn and you want people to feel like they're seen and heard and you want to have an impact on the next generation, you open yourself up to helping others. And my mom and my dad have always been that way with mentoring. So I saw that growing up. So it, it comes naturally to me. A lot of times I'll do speaking engagements and usually high schoolers or uh, young people who are in college, young people, gosh, you know, you all win. <laughs> uh, people, but the younger generation. That's too, them young knees right yeah, there. That's yeah. them young knees. <laughs> I have the knees. 
But people who are wanting to get into the business and who, you know, have seen me on social media or have watched me on TV are curious and um, they will reach out in a DM. This is not inviting everybody to DM me, by the way. That I really they go listen. down. I, <laughs> it does. Uh, but they will reach out. And a lot of times they're surprised that I reply. I haven't been able to have somebody shadow me since the pandemic, right? I'm looking forward to doing that again, though, because I teach you what you cannot learn in a classroom setting. I keep, as I've said before, I keep it so real. I keep it raw. I try to help young people. There I go again. Young people not make the same mistakes I made early on in my career. And I try to give them a leg up on the competition by letting them know what works and what doesn't. And I, I'm very honest. I think a lot of times when someone asks me if they can shadow me, they're expecting it to be kind of a cakewalk. And it's like, nope, we hit the ground running. You need to be here at five o'clock. And I've had some people show up at like 5.05, 5.15. I'm like, you're late. And they're like, we, oh, we're but it's news. only- we got is, deadlines. Thank you. Thank you. This is live television, bro. What's it doing? If I tell you you need to be here at five o'clock, you should have been here at 4.45. Facts. I mean, so I, I, but I do that because you want to mess up now off camera. And let me help correct your course so that when it's game time, you're ready to go. I mean, we're not talking about practice, okay? This is the game. Practice, okay? you know, <laughs> the game, okay? Okay, this is, All right, this so is the answer. One, I have the answer. One piece of advice, just a quick piece of advice that you would tell a young person who can't slide into your DMs that's thinking about getting into this business. Mm -hmm. Over what would it be? Over prepare. And by that, I mean, you need to stay ready. You don't have to get ready if you stay ready. And what I mean by that is, let's say you've decided I want to be a sports reporter. So I kind of fell into sideline reporting. I'm so grateful for the time that I spent at ESPN and ESPNU. I miss those days. I would love to do some more sideline reporting at the professional level, professional sports level, and maybe even college, because that was college sports is so fun. They're still so hungry. You know, um, although now they can make money doing it, but that's a whole nother conversation for another time. Right. But I, I, you have to really dive in, know people's stories, know little tidbits of information about people. Um, I think that that is what will set you apart when you're not just showing up to be pretty in front of the camera or to just have a viral moment. You are preparing yourself. You are reading constantly. You're following the blogs. You're following social media posts. Um, and, and you're engaged. So I think that that is the, the biggest piece of advice that I could leave you with is that you should be over preparing all the time. Nice. And uh, semi putting you on blast. Melissa mm -hmm. showed me a funny video of a fan of what was it? The Pistons fan made her a love song on oh YouTube. Oh my God. It touched me. It. it was beautiful. What? It was, it was hilarious. I didn't even. So here's a funny story. My husband, Scott, when we were dating, he found that. He found, I hadn't even seen the video. And I was like, what is this? Now, my husband grew up loving R&B, still does. And he said, wait, is this the video from, um, oh my goodness, now I can't think of it. What was the R&B group, the young kids? Oh my goodness. The ones who say like Aisha. Yeah, Aisha, ABC? you are. He's like, I think that's from the Aisha video. I'm like, hi, hi you thought it was from Aisha. You know what he's like? Okay, okay. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. a Jersey he boy. Him, yeah, he got some stripes. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a street cred. We get um, he has a black card. We have given him his black card. It might get revoked, but he's got a black card. <laughs> but you no, know, he he saw it and sent it to me, and I said, "What is this?" And then, you know, the people at at work saw it, and they were like, "We've done some investigating, and uh, this person is not a threat, but you're safe." And I was like, "Oh, I, I never thought of it." As a threat, I thought this was just a person who. No, it was funny. It was excited. clearly <laughs> flattering and lighthearted, so yeah. it was not creepy. No, it was. So it I'm was. sure you get a lot of creepy stuff, but that not was not so much it. anymore. Not so much anymore, but I used to. Oh my gosh, I appreciate not getting a lot of creepy stuff now. <laughs> well, Melissa, like yeah. I said, we okay. gotta have a little fun. Mm -hmm. I can't have one of my favorite you know, TV people on it and not have a little fun. Let's go. You know, I could talk to you forever, but since I can't, okay. I developed a personality profile that would make the FBI jealous. <laughs> this is a speed round of questions and will let me know a lot about you and uh -oh. people out here watching. Are you ready? Born, go. Summer or fall? Fall. Tea or coffee? Tea, all day. 
I, I, I knew it. Uh, team knew Lori Harvey one, or, or Michael B. Jordan. Oh, why you do that? Oh. Pick a side. Oh, okay. Well, can, I, can I give an explanation? I just have the same one. I have the same one. I have to, uh, okay, I've met Mm-mm. Michael B. Jordan, so I'm a, and, and my husband is a huge fan of Creed, so Michael B. Jordan. All right. Seven o'clock on the dot. Where is Usher? In his drop top, cruising the streets. Bloom, 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 bloom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Cold, Cold Play or Maroon 5? Maroon 5, I think they have more flavor. Speaking of flavor, Polynesian or Buffalo Sauce? Boo, neither one. What? I'm not. Are you a ranch person? I mean, you're a ranch person, ain't yeah, you? Yeah, or honey mustard. I like ranch. That's or that honey Texas. Mustard. But, 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 you know what? Because let me, let me just tell you something. When, like, it's like when people put barbecue sauce on something. If it's real barbecue, you don't need any sauce. Second, I don't like to dip. That's into that things. Texas. I mean, through and through, through and through, native Houstonian right here. Yeah, um, I, I don't believe in sauces. I think I've tasted Polynesian sauce one time. I do like ranch sometimes, but yeah, no, no, no sauces, no sauces. No, thank you. How short do you like to see Hoochie Daddy shorts? Uh, <laughs> what? Um, not Are we in the seven inch range, the five inch range? Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on his thunder thighs. If you're, if you're. Thigh dependent. With, I'm, I'm going to stick with seven because five is, is cutting it low. That's, that's low. <laughs> that's too low. Kobe or LeBron? Kobe. Kobe. LeBron uh, or Michael? Michael. Prince or Michael? Prince. Yeah, I love Prince, <laughs> Prince. Cocktail or wine? Ooh. Cocktail. My favorite is uh, Naked and Famous. I'll leave it there. <laughs> Whole Foods or Publix? Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah she bougie. Oh, I know. She bad she and bougie. Was, I mean, bad and bougie. I mean, I like organic. I like organic. All right. Speaking of bougie, Target <laughs> clothing, yay or nay? Don't sleep on Target clothing. Matter of fact, I have a maternity dress. No, I'm not expecting that I still wear that is from Target. It's tie dye. It's pink. It is the bomb round the house dress. You know, everybody's mama had that, that one dress that she wore forever. This, this is going to be that dress. <laughs> Tyrese Gibson's acting career in a word. <laughs> um, a, a word because you know I'm thinking about baby boy how about how I'll that, answer it for you damn <laughs> I was about to say you my real girl <laughs> <laughs> oh Tyrese alright and last but not least your mm. Houston bonus question Mm-mm. Akeem Olajuwon is to basketball as chameleonaire is to mm. Hip hop, okay. My dad represented him in a case once. <laughs> Hakeem, very Did nice. You, you That's how you have to say. It. Oh, he represented him or no, a millionaire? No, he represented a millionaire, millionaire, but my dad's lawyer too. But my, um, no, <laughs> he represented a millionaire for a case. Don't ask me which case, because I don't know. And this was at least a decade ago. But whenever you say Hakeem Olajuwon in Houston, you, I mean, I was there when we won the championships. Plural. Put some respect on it. Respect. Okay. Yeah. But you have to say it like that. Hockey. 94. Hockey. I love you all. I was in middle school. I remember. Wow. The whole city was Shout lit. Out. Lit. Shout out to the dream. <laughs> mm-hmm. Shout out to riding dirty. <laughs> all right. Well, that concludes my uh, profile of you. My findings are um, you are Vanessa William-esque. That is girl next door bougie. Congratulations. Thank you. I will take that honor. Thank you. <laughs> if only I had her eyes, though. That's the Williams. Those eyes. Mm, mm, mm. Classic, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, listen, Melissa, you're a busy woman. You probably got some meat thawing. I know <laughs> that you got a lot going on. So, but listen, once again, I appreciate you taking the time out to do this. Again, my first interview on the on Unmitigated Gall. We love you for it. So thank you for Chivalry, too. We we really appreciate your time. It was absolutely my honor to be here, and I'm so pleased. I got to be your first guest, Goldson. I love what you're doing here with Unmitigated Gall. Y'all are onto something here. Y'all really are. 
And last, this is the part of the interview where you plug your stuff, your socials, whatever you like, fire away. Okay, so on every social platform, I'm at Knowles It All. That's K-N-O-W-L-E-S-I-T-A-L-L. I don't know it all, but I like to pretend that I do, or at least I'm getting to know it all. So yeah, Knowles It All on all social platforms. And my website is melissanolestv.com. You heard the woman. Follow, like, subscribe. Melissa, talk to you later. All right. Take care. Bye. All right, Chevalier. Recommendations and invitations. What you got for me? All right. So I know I've been um, talking a lot to you recently um, about following and watching the Colorado Avalanche. I know you didn't do it, and that's okay. No. Um, no. But you missed out. You missed out because uh, my Colorado Colorado Avalanche are now the 2022 Stanley Cup champions. I got championship shirts coming on the way for me and my boys. Oh my <laughs> but that's God. not what I'm recommending since that's already it's already gone. It's already passed, um, and you missed out on it. But that's okay. Um, I'm sure you've heard, and a lot of people have been talking about it, and I missed it. And the reason why I missed it was because Katanji Brown Jackson was being sworn into the Supreme Court at the exact time that okay. Usher was doing his tiny desk performance on NPR. And if you have not seen it, um, that his voice is just, <laughs> it's butter. <laughs> it's well, so good. I have seen it. And it's weird because oh, you, you said that. It. You said it like it was a live event, like uh, the Warriors playing the Celtics. <laughs> like, I missed it because Kataji Brown. No, it's a tiny desk concert. Click, let me watch Usher. No, I watched it. It was. I know, uh, I'm just saying. It was happening at the same time, and, and, I, and I missed it. So I watched it later. Okay. And I mean, coming on, coming on the heels of that versus battle with um, Ray J and Omarion and all those people. Usher was like, sit down, boys. Let me show y'all how it's done. And it was, yeah. I mean, it's its so good. And I've seen him in concert once before um, here in Atlanta. I think it's always amazing when you get to see an artist in the city that they're from or where he was raised. Um, he brought out just every every act you could you can imagine. Every Atlanta rapper was at this concert. He just, he's just an amazing performer. And so that's my recommendation for this week. If you have not watched Usher's yes. Tiny Desk on NPR... I have 25 seen minutes it. long put it on well i think we should say what's good about it because it's definitely not mm -hmm. the best musical performance on the tiny desk that was that was probably anderson Pac. right um okay but what i loved mm, about it okay, was how, how much charisma he showed on it you know just how at ease he was yeah. which is why you got to watch the what you know what i mean um <laughs> It was just very All the memes of that are amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, so I think watching Usher control the room, and you could tell, like, okay, this is a pro, this is a veteran, this is, like, a, a legendary performer. It, it's kind of felt like what it must have been like to watch Al Green perform in, in, in like, a lounge Ooh. back in the day. Just someone who, like, controlled the room. I know my craft. You go enjoy yeah. yourself. Just chill out. So I think, yeah. you know, the musical arrangements, I didn't love, but I did love what, watching Usher just kind of like work the room. So, no, I, I watched it. It was worthwhile. But uh, I think the memes are, are better than the actual performance. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, because like I said, this did come on the heels of um, Usher doing um, or came on the heels of um, what was it? Sammy, Ray J and all them. So if mm -hmm. Usher were in a versus battle. Ooh. Who should he go up against? Uh, and don't I, say R. Kelly, because that is I'm not, not even a possibility. Kelly, the man's not even a possibility. <laughs> All right, the man's where he should be. But that is an interest, interesting debate as far as who had more hits. But anyway, we won't do that. Uh, okay. Chris Brown. I think Chris Brown is the only logical choice. I agree. I agree. Has has the world forgiven Chris Brown? Has black women forgiven? Has college educated? intellectual black women have y'all forgiven chris brown i don't know i did only because you know i always when i see someone like him you know i see uh i see my boys and so you know while what he did was horrific um i always thought he should be given a second chance and so i think people will always remember that about him you know remember that incident uh with rihanna but um yeah I yeah, think like so. he just At started working I, I in the UK. I can't speak for all of us, but 
He yeah. just started working in the UK again, which is mind blowing. But I mean, I think it would yeah, be I different if he was a repeat chances. offender. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that will ever happen, but I would love to see the two of them um, go head to head. Um, just because not only are they both amazing vocalists, but they're also both um, incredible performers. Um, and I think Chris Brown maybe has a little bit of an edge in terms of dancing yeah. over Usher. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would love Usher to see just that be doing that one too. little slide move the whole time. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the one little slide move the whole time. Yeah, Chris Brown that, be doing that. flips and like spinning on his pinky and stuff. I should be slide. Uh, I, I love um, your impersonation. <laughs> of course, he'd do it a lot smoother than that. You know what I mean? I, I would um, hope so. <laughs> can I, my recommendation. Um, yes. That was going to be it, but since um, you oh, took it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, ladies first. Black women Thank matter. Thank you. Um, I would say The Boys on Amazon. Um, I don't know that you would like it, but I think your sons would like it. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't like it because to like it, you have to like crude humor, superheroes, and just like male, you know, gross levels of violence. So I don't know if you're into all three of those things, but the storytelling is still pretty good. I like superheroes. I've, I've, so many people have recommended The Boys, um, including my boys. Um, but I've been warned that it's extremely graphic. Um, and so that's why I have not watched it yet. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, be warned, you know, what, what, what season is it on? Three, I think. Okay. Okay. And what is it about? Well, before I get that, but you haven't even seen Ozark yet, right? So that's neither here nor there. Yeah. No, no. If you watch no. the boy you know, before I'm, you watch I'm behind Ozark, on everything, I still... We can't be friends. I, I will at least watch Ozark because Ozark is finished. It's done. And I like that. I like series that are, are, are finished. You know, I, it wasn't too long ago that I had just finished Game of Thrones. <laughs> I got oh FOMO God. in that last, that last, after <laughs> that last season. And I watched the entire thing leading up to the finale. Um, still need to watch like Breaking Bad, House of Cards. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what y'all are doing that you have so much time to watch so much television. And I don't know what I'm doing that I don't. No, no, no. Um, no, no, no. Don't play me. I, I keep a busy schedule, too. The difference <laughs> is you watch way too you many do. games that you don't need to watch. Like, pick a team I do. and I focus do. in on that team. You don't need to watch all these other random games. Uh, plus, you be out in the streets true. hard. So now that... I know. No. I, everyone says that. Um, I, I can't help it. I'm sorry. I'm very popular. No. <laughs> <laughs> now that um, all sports are done, um, except for baseball, um, and I'm mm. just not, I don't really get into it till the playoffs. Maybe I can find some time to catch up on all these shows. And Handmaid's Tale, if you haven't breath. watched it, it's very now. Yeah. So, um, invitations. We did our recommendations. Yeah, I watched two episodes of that, and it was too much. Invitations. Invitations. All right, let me. I'll, I'll let you go first because I have to think of something. <laughs> hmm, that is tough. Um, who do you want to invite? Who do I want to invite? I, I'd say, uh, I'd say Anderson Pock. You know, he. I'd like Ooh. to hear his perception of Usher's tiny desk and hear him rank the tiny desks and see if he thinks he's the number one ever. One of the worst Tiny Desks that you will ever see is actually by T.I., who is a great artist, and arguably a Mount Rushmore <sighs> of Southern rappers. But I don't know if he just didn't oh, understand okay. the format, I, okay. didn't prepare. I don't know what it was, yeah. but his Tiny Desk was god awful. So, But yeah, I'd love to see uh, Anderson Pac huh. discuss the Tiny Desk concerts since we're talking about it. Who's your invitation? Okay. Um... I like that you put Southern rappers because I thought you were about to say the, the Mount Rushmore. I was like, oh, God, there's no way. Not even <laughs> top 10 is T.I. in there. He could, he could be top 10. Um, mm, no. Not even probably close. Like, you probably went in old Not Big Daddy Kane type people. Like, oh, Big Daddy Kane, KRS-One, top oh, 10. I love Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> oh, see, I know. Can't talk Not to in you. my top 10, Can't but I do you like old, Big Daddy old, Kane. Old school. Like, who didn't? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, invitation. Um, 
Oh my gosh, I should have thought about this. Um, you know what? I will. I would love to speak to you since she's done quite a few interviews for, to Brittany Griner's wife, Sherelle. Oh. Yes, and I would also like to know at what point did some, she give up? I've heard up? some. Um, I'm not married, so that would be an, a question that you would have to answer. I would probably say never. Well, I think publicly you say I, never, I mean, right? Ten years. Right. But they're still married. Like, unless she divorces her while she's in prison, then she's got to wait for her till she comes home. At least yeah. that's what I would want my future husband to do. <laughs> yes, yes. You're a mythical, You're a perfect man. A hopeless yes. romantic. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, again, but everyone... I would, love to, I would love to talk to her and just hear what she has to say. I, that, no, that would be good. We'll, we'll, we'll get her on the show. But everyone, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Tell your mama, tell your granddaddy. Um, I'm Eric. This is Chevalry. And you are watching the Unmitigated Doll <laughs> Podcast. See you next Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>